Hey friend, and welcome back to RGD Gaming, the least toxic, most fun community in all the gaming. In this Wild Rift gameplay, I'm going to continue my series on Zeri. You ever wondered if you can play Zeri based entirely on your lane matchup? Eh, maybe, maybe not, eh, but maybe you should. In this video, I'm going to share why, and I'll talk about matching against Anila, having a Yumi support, and playing against a Pike support. Which, at first thought, might seem like an odd choice, the Pike support, but if he can land and engage, Neela can follow up in a big way and do a lot of damage to us. Who is your favorite ADC to either play with Yumi or to see picked when you have a Yumi on your team? Or maybe just who's your favorite champion whenever you have a Yumi on your team so they can jump on you and help you crush the enemy team? Comment your answer down below. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Now, we see the enemy pick Anila, and I'm countering with Azari. Both excel in the late game, prefer to be in team fights over one-on-one -on -one situations and utilize their speed or dashes to quickly engage or kite the enemy. Zeri has an advantage in lane because she has range and can poke Neela while she farms. The other advantage I feel that I have here is Yumi. Yumi is so good in solo queue because of who they are as a champion. They literally follow you every move and just play off your decisions that the ADC makes. It's such an advantage to have the coordination Yumi brings to the bottom lane. The other great thing about Yumi is if you lose lane, she can just hop on whoever is the carry on your team and carry from there. We really need to watch ourselves at level 1, 2, 3, and 4. And once we hit level 5, then we can really think about doing engaging of some sort. Because at level 1, we can get hooked. At level 2, if Pike, Pike can potentially have stun and Neela can have her dash. And then at level 3, Pike can be invisible, hook stun and Neela can dash in, dodge our attacks, and hit us with her whip. So we really want to be careful. We don't want to get too crazy. Yumi is a little bit far ahead there, but that can be okay because they can just jump right on us. But really what we want to focus on right now is just solid farming until we hit our first power spike, which is level 5, at which point we can think about engaging because we can catch one of them with Yumi's ultimate and then when I use my ultimate I can do damage to both of them and put out a lot of damage pretty quick which will generally surprise most people. So see this is exactly what I'm talking about. Yumi was a little bit too far extended. We don't win trades with them at level 2 or 3 or 4 because I don't have the damage output yet and neither does Yumi and so that can happen. So you really want to be careful in situations like that and what we really want to do is what I'm doing here, which is I'm just trying to farm, even though they're making it hard for me. And I'm just trying to put a little bit of poke on them to wear them down in case we get a gang from mid or from our mid or from our jungle. But otherwise, we just want to sort of hang back, do our thing, and not do anything too crazy until we hit level 5, which is okay. And a lot of people kind of get impatient. Wild Rift is a very fast-paced game, but there are going to be periods of time where you want to be patient. You saw a little movement help our jungle farm a little bit faster but I'm almost level 5 right now so I'm level 4 and I can start thinking about some type of engage but I really still don't need to like it's not critical that I engage right at level 5 as soon as I hit it um, really a gank from our jungle or some sort of misstep from the enemy team is what I'm looking for with Zeri and she can be so fast she can hit you with her second ability through a wall does a ton of damage and slows you first ability slow and then she can jump on you and then our ultimate puts out a ton of damage, especially in teamfight situations. So you see they both use their dashes. I backed up, and I realized that Pike is a little bit too far and doesn't have a dash. And so what do I do? I jump in, and I try to get a kill. Unfortunately, I'm not able to, but I'm able to put a ton of damage. And they make the mistake of coming back while I still have my ultimate up. And I'm able to get both of them. And then Yumi has a great route as they're getting out of there. And I still have shield here, so I'm just baiting. I know I'm going to kill this Wukong, and they didn't stand a chance. Part of their... Um, th they just thought they'd be able to take me out, and I knew they wouldn't because I still had shield. And so I just played that a little bit slow, and I knew exactly what was going on there. If you saw that fight happen, I almost had the kills originally. I saw Wukong coming, and then I saw them coming back. So I just went back up to secure the kills on the both of them. And then fought the Wukong when I knew I had an advantage one versus one. If I would have left them alive and sort of tried to put damage onto the Wukong, I definitely would have lost because Pike can hit me with the pull, stun me, and Neela can dive in and do a bunch of damage. So you have to be aware of those situations as they're happening, and you have to use Zeri's kit 
to the best advantage. So in that case, I dove when I wanted to, and then here's another one. I jump over the wall to get Neela. There's basically no escape at that point, and a lot of people don't even think about that situation where you can just jump over a wall and engage with the enemy team. And now I'm 3 0 and one simply because we used Zeri's jumps to her best advantage and put ourselves in situations. And there, I actually did it literally again. I, you know, I had, know that was fast paced, but I did it again. The Neela didn't anticipate the jump over the wall, jumped over the wall, and got another kill on Neela. And she's just not anticipating the movements that we have and how quickly we can engage. And when we do jump the wall, we're using our ability. So as soon as you jump the wall, you wanna tap the second ability. It will auto aim for you, so you don't necessarily have to shoot it before you jump. There will be times that that misses. It's okay, it's not the end of the world, and it's not really your fault. But most of the time, it will auto aim to the champion. So as you jump the wall, they're gonna get hit with a slow and a crit, and then you use your first ability to slow them further. And ideally, you have your ultimate up, so you jump on them, hit them with ultimate. So you're really hitting them with every single ability. The other thing that the jump over the wall is gonna do for you is it'll shoot through enemies too. So even if there's a wave there, you can still shoot them and oftentimes put out enough damage to get the kill. That was a lot of information. You might wanna go back and listen to all that, but I really packed in exactly how to use Zeri in about 30 seconds right there. Um, and so now what are we doing? We have the first turret down and we're putting pressure on the mid tower right now because that's what you want to do. So you really want to take out all three of those tier one towers. It opens up the map and allows you to be everywhere and anywhere on the map. And you can roam a lot better. Your jungle can gank a lot better and you can just get around so much easier. Okay, now that we're 4 and one what is our role in this game? We want to carry the game and win. I can see that we have a rotation coming. I don't want to scare the enemy off too quickly. So I give them a little bit of time and let them wait and so that way we can get Singe to come around behind and we can get Neela for another kill. Now my next thing that I'm going to do that you're going to see is I am going to farm like crazy and I want to be at objective. So you can see me here farming the enemy camps. There's a lane I'm getting there and I'm looking to take our camps as well and then I want to get a shop in and you can see that our team is going to be able to get dragon for free. That's no problem. I actually took the enemy with me when I wrapped around to farm more. And now I want to be at the next team fight. I don't really like this because I wasn't there to begin with. But if we're going to get into a fight, I want to be here. In the, so you can see they're engaging onto Annie. I'm able to hit them with a great second ability. And I blow up Wukong. I get my ultimate off. And now they really don't stand a chance against me at this point. I'm so far ahead. I'm fed. And they really can't fight us. And they surrender. When you get favorable lane matchups with late game champions, you have to take advantage of them, and then you gotta roam around the map very quickly and get into situations where you're in team fights. Especially with a champion like Zeri that wants to be in those team fights and can put out so much damage and just crush the enemy and crush the morale, and that's why they gave up. Because they knew basically they had no chance at any team fight that I show up with. Hopefully I see you on the rift. GG.